let's take a look. What is the purpose of an interview? It really is to learn about your strengths, your strengths as an applicant, and what is it that you have to contribute that would help our students. And that's what it is. And they're, they're looking for something, they may be looking for something very particular, and are you the person that possesses that skill that they're looking for? Now, I can also share with you, coming in, sometimes um, I, we are frequently asked, is, um, you know, I'm coming in and I don't have any experience. You know, could that be, you know, a little more challenging to assume a job? Well, I'm going to tell you what. I had a first year, right? Ms. Cavazos had a first year. You ladies had a first year. Okay, so consequently, it's not always the one that has the most experience that lands the job. It's those that demonstrate flexibility, that demonstrate the ability to go above and beyond minimal expectations, those that demonstrate through the course of the conversation that they're willing to take, to do no matter, whatever it takes to make sure students are successful. Now, you're not gonna sit here and say these things that I'm just listening to you. Those are gonna be demonstrated through your actions. Does that make sense? It's demonstrated through your actions. Merely saying, well, I'm going to differentiate my instruction is not enough. That just, all you're sharing is that you know the term that's important, okay? We're looking more at an application. How could that be demonstrated? So, here's the point, go back one more. Here's the point that we were talking about. It is critical that you know that it is not only the districts interviewing the applicants. Likewise, you should be interviewing the districts. Does it match okay, the setting that I want to work in? If you try to force it to match, it will not be a good, there probably won't be a good outcome. Okay? We feel, Ms. Cavazos, that we have an excellent district. We have an excellent district. Each of our campuses, we feel, exhibit wonderful opportunities for students and, and teachers and professional growth. Now, we also know that every campus is different, and that is really depends on the leadership of that campus. So for us to say that every single one of you would fit perfectly in, in every one of our campuses would not be would not be accurate. You have to find what matches what you're looking for. And it is a two-way. It's two-way. So, you know, when you're up there and you're nervous, because you will be nervous as you're interviewing, but it's, it's not easy. At every level, it gets, you, you're nervous. And at that point, you think about, well, you know what? What is my level of comfort? Because it should be you're analyzing that and making decisions accordingly. Okay. So, competencies. When you're looking at being interviewed and you're wanting to go into the next level, really know that you, as you're delivering whatever message or answering questions, everything that you have, <coughs> that you are exhibiting should be formal communication, okay? So there's different types of communication. There's a, a way that I speak when I'm with my there's a different way that I address when I'm with my, with, my, with my colleagues, and I address things in a different way when I'm with parents. So you have to know that when you are in an interview, that it is professional communication. Everything about what you do is professional. That's number one. Now, you ask yourself, which is a question that, that comes up a lot, what, what is it that I need? What should I take to an interview? Well. I'm going to answer that by first telling you it depends because it really does depend. I can share with you what we expect for you to bring, but if you're not if you're not interviewing for Alden or if Alden is not the only place you're going to interview for, then where, where where what else do I need to do? So there are some things that you're going to have to do in order to, to find out what you need to take. But we're going to share with you if you click there we go. There are some th some minimal things. These are things that you could possibly use or possibly need to bring. Okay, so you may want to be prepared. The first one, that I'm, I'm, I'm almost willing to bet that the majority of the districts will either have you upload a resume to their application system, 
or bring resumes with you. It is always safe. It's a safe, safe action to take. If you just, or anytime you have an interview, you have extra resumes with you. Okay. have it online, we're done. So I'm going to ask you to bring it in. Test scores and certification. So we're going to kind of talk a little bit about each one. Now, first of all is the resume. Now, with the resume, I'm not going to get into specific details about the components and, and what it should include, because you should have resources available that you can utilize. And we strongly encourage you to do so. Now, we're looking at, we may look at things, uh, the design. If your design is not, is not um, reader friendly, okay, and a person has to, has to really struggle to understand what the content, the content that's included, well then that's not really going to help, okay, because I can tell you, we sift through thousands of applications, okay, so you want to make it easy for anyone to understand and what you have, what experiences you have, and those types of things. You also want to look at the format, making sure that you're consistent with And again, need to emphasize, if you have resources at your, at your university, um, you really need to take advantage of that. No matter how much we feel that they're perfect, it can always make it better. Okay? And it's always a great idea to have someone else look at that, what you've done. Okay? You'd be really surprised. Sometimes I bring samples of some of the things that we have. And um, you know, you'll have resumes that don't include any contact information. You'll have resumes that don't include what you're certified to teach. Now, isn't that important information? Uh -huh. Everything else looked great. But there are things that you may not consider that are essential to have. Yes. One of my prior jobs, um, I was a grant coordinator. And one of the things I did was go over resumes. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest, biggest flaws was editing. Mm -hmm. Do not edit your own resume. You need to have a peer edit your resume for you. <coughs> because when you read it, your brain will automatically fix all of those problems because you wrote it. So have a peer edit it for you and someone who has a background in education because you want them to understand the terminology. And that is a great comment and suggestion and we do that at every level because that's not something that we limit to only because we're doing a resume. When as a teacher, if I was sending something out to my parents, what did I do? I wrote it and then I had my neighbor read it, proofread it to make sure it was accurate. You do that at every level, whether you're a, a teacher, an assistant principal, a principal, at every level, it's always a good practice to have someone, someone give you feedback on your work. Okay, um, it's also very important, um, are equally important, are the cover letters. Cover letters, now I caution you to, um, to really, like, Pay close attention to the content of your cover letter. Ms. Cavazos will tell you how many times have we received uh, a cover letter saying to, um, to now, you know what district we're from? You know what district we're from? Oh. Oh. Okay. So it would be quite interesting to receive a cover letter that says, I am interested in seeking a professional position in A. Okay? I feel like A. Lake would be the perfect place for me. Which, you know, and, and, and it's true, it happens. It happens all the time. And I know that that individual, because we promote you to, uh, to, take, to take risks. We promote you to go out and interview with, with multiple districts, because that's how you're going to find the perfect fit for you. Who's going to help me develop as a teacher and get me to where I need to be? And so that is important. But at the same time, you need to be cautious with what you do, because sometimes we get into such a routine minor mistakes like that, I can tell you, do you think that those people are employed with all eight? No. Oh, no. Yes, so it could be the same going the other way around, so you just have to be very cautious. And make sure that it's accurate again, and, oh, in the application part. So now that we're looking at the applications, most of the district have, have moved to an online system. 
and you have access to their applications uh, there. Now, it is important to read what the requirements are prior to completing an application, but I can share with you that most districts will probably want to make sure that you are certified during your last semester, but those are things that, that require a little more investment in time on your part. So having a resume with you as you're completing that and being cautious and not rush through, if there are um, essay type questions for you, then we certainly encourage you to go to Word, type it up, be thoughtful about your response, be precise and concise, make sure you have uh, it's formal writing, that you have, you are able to deliver the message that you want to deliver, and um, more importantly, have somebody take a look at it. Because even though you do, you run spell check through Microsoft, do errors still happen? Absolutely. Okay, so the same thing applies. Um, check your grammar. Uh, now, when you are looking for someone to hire you, when we, when we recommend that you include those individuals, in our district we require them, that, that, which would be the university supervisor, your supervising teacher, and your <coughs> principal. Those three individuals are very important individuals that, that have had an opportunity to see you teach, to see you at your best. So those are three that, that really you should consider adding to your application if you're going to any other district and they don't require it, okay? Having a recommendation from a principal, your, your cooperating teacher, a university supervisor is very powerful. It's very powerful, okay? Now, make no mistake about it. If you have a former supervisor, that's equally important, okay? Because that way we'll be able to see what are your work ethics, okay? What, what, are, what are they able to share? Even though it's not specific to our to our uh, field, what do they what can they share? Sometimes that's the case. So we have a question about. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Um, what if your principal is like retiring this year? You, you can still use the reservation fund. That is a great question. What if your principal is retiring this year? This is why it's key. Okay, because if they're on, uh, this is it's key to have everything taken care of early, early because you can already list them as a reference and they will already have the feedback. Once they provide the feedback, even if they are um, ones that are retired, resigned, you assume a different position, that will still stay on file and be linked to your application, okay? Plan B, and I'm gonna tell you, if you go and ask for a letter of recommendation that requires a little more time and effort, Okay, versus what you'll find in the applications at the district levels, which is more of a, of a, of a Likert scale type setting where they're, they're actually evaluating based on, a, on some sort of scale system. So with that said, um, those get, get completed a lot faster. So my recommendation to you would be possibly maybe getting two things. One would be um, getting your application completed early. We'll try to get that in because most of the systems will notify you when your references have come in. And then number two, have a safeguard by um, asking is there a way to contact them, you know, to kind of look at, 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 what, at what it is. However, that's not, a, if that's those, neither one are options that, that are able to meet your needs, then um, you may have to go to a backup, which would be an assistant principal. But I can tell you this, I can tell you this, because this is important, and this can be done, <coughs> is where you are now, the people who are going to, who hires? Who recommends for hiring? Principals, okay? If the principals don't know who you are, then that's gonna, that, that's going to be a challenge for you to assume a position there, or for, you, for them to even make a recommendation for you. Now, quite frequently, you can have people say to us, well, you know what, uh, the principal hasn't met me yet. And that happens sometimes. Know that that should not be a reason why you don't initiate a conversation with them. Because they have to know who you are to recommend you. And trust me, speaking to your principal, you're not limiting yourself to only that one person. Principals have, are very close. 
if, they, if, they're, if another position develops at another campus, they're going to share. If you have really, really made an effort to build those relationships, okay, then they're going to say, you know what? Selena Chapa, I think, may, may, work, may be a good fit for you. Why don't you give her a call? Okay, that, those are things that happen. So they have to know who you are. We suggest that if you have not made that connection, who is the heart of the school? Secretary. Yes, secretary. <laughs> Nobody would ever get to us without going to the secretary. Okay? So, you start with the secretary and you let them know that we would like five minutes. Now, if you go on and on and on, that's going to be the last time you're in that office. Okay? <laughs> I tell you, time is very short, critical, critical. So, you're going to talk to the secretary. May I schedule a meeting with Ms. Gavasso so I just do five minutes? Ago. While you're there, Okay. You can her, you ask, welcome them while you're doing your, your teaching to please come in and give you feedback. Okay? So if they come in and give you feedback, then you have other sources of documentation that, that, uh, that, that they're able to kind of look through. Now know that we're not gonna have we're not gonna expect everyone to be at exceeds because we even have master teachers that are not at exceeds. Okay? We just want to make sure that they, you, you welcome that kind of feedback. That shows, that demonstrates a lot on your part. So that's very, very important. Where are we? Um, be honest. And be honest, yes. On the application, that is critical. Because like, we can share with you one thing that will absolutely, definitely happen, absolutely, definitely happen. You know what that is? If you're not truthful on your application, you're automatically excluded from consideration. Automatically. Okay. And so things, whatever they ask, it's really important for you to be honest. Okay? Because there, there will always be a time for an explanation. Okay? All right. Let's see. So we move on to test scores because this is really has been a trend that we've seen, and we were sharing this earlier, where you really, if you, have, if you haven't completed all your testing requirements, you should really be lacking possibly one right, during student teaching, and you need to make an effort to get those taken care of as soon as possible. Because you cannot be considered for a position unless you have that taken care of. And Selena, we really, you're not even going to be able to get into an interview. Right. You can't. That's right. You're not even going to be given the opportunity mm -hmm. to interview with us if you have not completed your testing. Question. Yes. We've already passed all the content exams, but they won't even allow us to apply for certification after we graduate. How are we able to do that? Good question. Good yeah. Question. Now, we, you, I, we, we, we kind of talk about test scores and certification, and you're absolutely correct. You can't apply for your certification. We know that. But what we do look for as districts, we look to make sure that all the testing is taken care of. We can just bring in those scores. You, in some cases, it's, in our case, it's not even necessary to bring in the scores because once you complete your application, part of the application asks for your um, social security number. We look at that. We look it up ourselves before we even call for an interview. Or we, you know, we make that that next contact. Okay. So that is critical. And then when you finish, okay, we, you, you have to have everything. You know that you're going to graduate. You know that you've passed on your certification. As soon as you graduate, then we know that your next step is going to be to apply for your certification. And so um, that, that's a really good question. Because don't, don't feel like the term certification has to be, you know, you have to have your, your certification completely approved and you know, 